Welcome to the Real News Network. My name is Gregory Wilpert and I'm coming to you from Quito, Ecuador. The British vote in favor of exiting the European Union, the so-called Brexit or British exit, has unsettled people all around Europe and in Britain. One of the arguments in favor of leaving the EU from, progressive, from the progressive side has been that the EU is an anti-democratic institution that undermines British sovereignty. Other arguments, mostly from the right, have involved economic issues and immigration. With us to discuss the impact of the Brexit vote on Britain and on Europe is Kostas Lapavitsas. He's a professor of economics at the University of London School of Oriental and African Studies. He is also a former parliamentarian for Syriza in Greece. He joins us from Athens, Greece. Thanks, Kostas, for joining us today. Let's uh, look a little bit back at the process here as to uh, the, how the vote came about. Um, there's been a lot of kind of confusion as to uh, why even would David Cameron uh, risk uh, his, uh, his uh, prime ministership on such an important issue and, uh, I mean, he didn't have to call for a referendum. So why did he go about, how did this whole vote come about in Britain? I think that politically this represents a gross miscalculation by uh, David Cameron. He had a long-standing political problem within the Tory party. He thought that he would fix it by calling a referendum, which he thought that he would win easily, and that would settle the internal um, disputes within the Tory party. He miscalculated very badly. And the reason why he miscalculated, and within the entire British establishment, is because, of course, the question of the uh, referendum touched upon a real deep class divide uh, in Britain, which came to the fore on this question. Um, the people who voted for exit are basically uh, the lower social strata, working class, poor people, uh, essentially the, the, the people who would be um, the lower end of the uh, income and other distribution uh, in the country, uh, together with some low middle class uh, strata who uh, also voted in favor of exit. The people who voted in favor of remaining in the country are the rich, the well-off, the most powerful uh, concentrations of capital, and the upper middle class. This divide came to the fore, and exit won because the discontent of the poorer and the lower social strata was too strong uh, to be held back. It came to the fore, it came to the fore and it, it prevailed. So we've got a deep class divide uh, that's behind uh, British exit. We should never lose uh, sight of that. You mentioned discontent, but I mean, what kind of discontent? I mean, one of the things that many people, particularly on the right, have always been arguing is that there's discontent of, over immigration. Was that really the main discontent, would you say? Or is there other discontent that this was an expression of? If we start with uh, a class understanding of what, ha what happened, which is fundamental, then we can understand the types of discontent. Um, we should bear in mind that the poor in Britain, and I don't mean the organized working class because that's a different uh, issue that we can discuss in a minute, but the poor in Britain have been feeling um, under a lot of pressure because of sustained austerity for years. There's pressure on uh, incomes, there's pressure on uh, employment, there's pressure on housing, there's pressure on social services that have been subjected to sustained cuts. Uh, because of austerity budgets for years. Now, put that together with substantial flows of immigration, inflows have actually trebled the last 10 years, and the bulk of these inflows have come from uh, Eastern Europe within uh, the European Union. And you can see how the poor um, would be perceiving what has been happening uh, to their country. Uh, they go to receive medical services, uh, they're asked to wait for hours in the queue, um, and a lot of people waiting with them uh, are recent immigrants. Now, if and unless someone comes out and explains to them that this is because of austerity and this isn't the fault of workers and so on, they'll draw the conclusion that it is the immigration that is to blame and it is the EU that is to blame. And that's largely what has happened. So the pressure of the last few years that the poor have been feeling uh, has turned into uh, an anti-EU um, perspective. Now, at the same time, what we also have is an advanced and very prevalent sense uh, that um, the lower social 
classes in Britain have of loss of control over their environment, loss of sovereignty over their own country, and a decline in democracy. The two go together, and that's the biggest lesson of the uh, referendum. Um, sovereignty and democracy and command over um, the conditions of life and, 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 and in a sense, the country uh, for poor people go together. There was a prevalent sense of loss uh, in Britain. Now, the upper class, the rich, the better off, the upper middle class all came out in favor of um, remaining in the EU. It was natural, natural um, that the poor would come out against and say, no, no, we don't want that. And that's what happened. Well, one of the main arguments that, of course, the right had made is that the EU is to, bl to be blamed for the immigration inflow. And, um, but what you're implying is also that the austerity policies had something to do with the EU. Uh, can you explain that a little bit more? Because one of the arguments that I've heard before uh, is actually goes more in the other direction, that, that the austerity policies were really something homemade uh, by the British, uh, by the Tory, Tory government, by David Cameron, and uh, uh, that the EU didn't have so much of an impact on, on those kinds of policies. Of course, austerity was homemade um, because uh, Britain had a tremendous crisis in 2008, 2009, and we've been living through uh, policies of austerity, of austerity for years uh, as a result of that. Of course, austerity was homemade. Um, so I didn't say that the EU caused the austerity. Of course, it was homemade. But the political elite and the social classes that were in favor of austerity were also in favor of staying in the EU. And the connection, the correlation was clear to people's mind. Now, immigration uh, has to do with the EU, and the sense of loss of control over it uh, was also very prevalent. Here, the blame must lie with the left, not with the right. The right made hay, and some very unpleasant people, some very objectionable people, uh, racists, um, extreme neoliberals, came out um, and made some facile connections. It was the left that should have come out, uh, pointed out the reasons for pressure on people's income and offered them an option, an option, an alternative that would also have allowed them to feel again in command of their own circumstances, that they would have allowed people to feel that democracy works, that they actually are masters of where they live, because that's absent, I repeat to you, that's absent uh, for working people and for the poor in Britain. That wasn't forthcoming. So the extreme right made the, um, the political gains. The blame must lie with the left. I'm afraid the, the British Labour Party made a terrible mistake, mistake in how it handled um, the situation, and so did much of the left. So let's, let's turn to the, particularly that issue. So now that uh, the vote has happened uh, in favor of the Brexit, of leaving the EU, uh, what does that mean for the left, uh, for the labor movement, for the Labour Party, and uh, progressive social movements in general? How should they move forward now that um, now that the, uh, Britain is no longer part of the EU and possibly face a backlash, in a sense, uh, from uh, the far right, which sees itself as being vindicated? in the situation because of the uh, immigration issue being perceived as being the main issue? This is the most important question, of course, and all the energies of the left must um, go and focus on this, uh, to, must go towards and focus on this uh, issue because uh, we must get the answer right. Uh, otherwise, we will have very unpleasant uh, circumstances emerging in Britain and elsewhere. This is a historic moment. It's a moment that indicates uh, the beginning of the end for the European Union, as well as uh, a, dramatic, a dramatic change for, for, uh, for Britain. The left must get it right, which means that the left must come out and offer to the British people uh, a genuine alternative. Now, the trade unions came out in favor of Remain. They also misjudged it. Um, the Labour Party, as I've already indicated, did not offer a, a, a very good uh, prospect to the British people. We need a different proposal uh, put across, a proposal that breaks with the Europeanism um, of the last few years, the sense that all progress uh, goes together with the um, European Union. That's not true, and we need to say that clearly. This, what this means in the context of Britain 
which will obviously be uh, used elsewhere in, in Europe as well, is realistic proposals on what democracy would mean today. Democracy is very important. Uh, we must, as, as the left, make proposals that actually mean things to people where they, leave, where they live, that they fe feel that they can command their own circumstances, they can command the conditions of life um, at the neighborhood uh, and at the workplace. That's what democracy must mean, and we must propose that clearly. This, I repeat, is impossible without some element of uh, national sovereignty. The left has for too long uh, been highly apprehensive of any idea of national sovereignty. This is impossible to do today. We must reestablish the meaning of national sovereignty from a left-wing perspective. That mm -hmm. must also go with a radical economic program that allows uh, greater democracy, uh, more sovereignty, uh, to have content. This means nationalizing banks. It means nationalizing the steel industry, nationalizing um, the uh, railways, uh, public services, and so on must be boosted. All these uh, progressive things that we want to see must be put coherently on the table. Uh, but together, as I repeat, with the broader program of democracy and sovereignty uh, for, for people and for nation. So I guess you're saying that these kinds of policies that you're proposing are not possible within the context of the European Union. So in other words, what it what sounds like what you're implying is that um, for other countries in Europe, uh, to, in order to focus on some of uh, what the rest of Europe, what other countries of Europe would have to do then is leave the EU as well. Is, is that correct? In order to pursue, if they were to wanted to pursue these policies that you're talking about, they would have to leave the EU. Is that correct? Brexit puts the future of the EU uh, on the table. No question at all about it. This is a historic moment. It puts the question of the EU on the table, and we must start with the understanding that the EU has failed. And it has failed for a variety of reasons, democracy being one of them, economic policies being another, and of course, the madness of the common currency, which doesn't apply to Britain, thankfully, but it applies uh, elsewhere. The EU has failed. The left for, for too long has associated the EU with progressive policies and progressive politics. That must change because people have got genuine grievances about the EU and the ones who are benefiting politically from these grievances are the extreme right. So we must rethink left-wing politics along the lines that I've already suggested for Britain for the whole of the continent. That doesn't mean going back to a state of... Uh, national uh, competition, nationalism, or, or anything of the sort. It's a fallacy to counterpose the false cosmopolitanism and false internationalism of the EU to uh, extreme nationalism. The left never subscribed to this idea of internationalism coming uh, from Brussels, never the, the historic left never subscribed to this idea of na um, internationalism coming from Brussels. This is bourgeois nationalism, uh, bourgeois internationalism. The left has always had different ideas about internationalism, and he must rediscover those urgently. This means, as I said before, re-establishing democracy, re-establishing a sense of sovereignty and economic policies that go, that, that go with that. If there is no sovereignty, if there is no command over the neighborhood, the workplace, and the nation, the beneficiary tends to be large international capital. And we've seen that with TTIP very clearly in Europe uh, at the moment. Uh, we're almost out of time, so just one last question. Since you're in Greece and Athens right now, uh, and that's a country you know that you originally come from, uh, do you think that, uh, that the Brexit vote will make it easier or more likely that Greece will also leave the European Union? Uh, the result was actually a boost, a great boost to the uh, radical left that wishes to continue the fight that was basically abandoned by Syriza last uh, summer when it surrendered to the uh, lenders. Uh, it was a great boost, um, but to continue that fight and to, 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 to bring justice and, uh, uh, and a new uh, uh, social situation in Greece, the left needs urgently new ideas, such as the ones that I've suggested, uh, new ideas about uh, what should happen to this country. And you should bear in mind that the unraveling of the European Union is well advanced uh, now, and Greek exit from the monetary union and possibly from the European Union is something that's beginning to shape up um, more and more concretely uh, on a daily basis after the uh, 
uh, events of Brexit. So um, the radical left must pre must prepare again. He will have a great historical burden on his shoulders uh, pretty soon again. Okay, unfortunately we're out of time, but um, thanks so much, uh, Costas, for joining us today. It was a very interesting discussion, and we'll uh, certainly be uh, keeping an eye on the ongoing developments as they unfold. So th thanks again for for being with us today on the Real News. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching the Real News Network.